every month I say this, every month it also feels like Christmas again. October's top 10 games. None of these may break high seven digits, except for maybe one, actually two. But let me tell you, the accessibility factor, the affordability factor in terms of a better game at a price you can afford. I'll tell you right now, top to bottom for this month of October looks freaking insane. Yes, that insane. I am that pumped about this when I was looking through this list. Let's go. So special open intro here. You may be wondering, WTF is on the table in front of me. This is a huge black box, 19 pounds. This is separate from the other top 10 that we're gonna talk about here in a minute. But I needed to show you this because literally 19 pounds worth of game. And what is this? Well, Adventure Together is putting out later this month, and it was previously called Scape, in the lines of a hero scape redesign portable system for not only DMs, but also a completely remastered, redone, sandbox-esque tabletop game. Yeah. Let me show you what's inside this because this is absolutely massive insanity, right? So you open it up and look at this right now. You can't see with the plastic wrap, but let me show you what we've got going on here. This is one of the boss miniatures right here. Let me show you this thing. Now this appears to be sun dropped, but you can kind of see what we've got going on here. And let me be clear about this. It has pedestals because you're gonna be riding this thing, also potentially taming it. And that's the crazy part of it. Now, not even the craziest part though, because we also have some pre-painted trees in addition. So yeah, we're going whole hero scape in a completely new, utterly different direction. And they're also including like a golf game to go along with it because it's gonna be a hex-based grid modular system that you're gonna be able to build just like here with hero scape. And there's a lot of stuff here, folks. And this is gonna give you biomes, like different environments that you're gonna be able to mix, match, create, stack, go together. A little bit of expansion content, a little basically of HeroScape done in a completely revitalized newer way is what they're going for. And cross utility, not only on the D&D as well as the tabletop side of things with a game to go along with it. Yes. Yes, please. I'm not kidding about this, right? This is massive, 19 pounds. If you're not hyped for this, go check out their website. I'll throw the link down below as a starter. But there's a lot of stuff under here that I can't even show you yet. Intrigued? Peaked? Yeah, let's go to the regularly scheduled 10 list because this one deserves its own spot. Let's go. Now we're gonna go these actually in order this month. I'm gonna tell you my most hyped right away, give you a couple honorable mentions at the end because again, there are always one or two that excluded and there's always half a dozen that'll surprise us that'll launch sometime unexpectedly as well. So let's go top to bottom. There you go, let's go. Now top three, I could exchange these in any order depending on those variabilities and those factors that I mentioned a minute ago. Price point, ease of play, rule book. Show me what you got. Now, first up, Marvel Dice Throne X-Men. Marvel Dice Throne X-Men. Reaction video is coming out later this week in terms of what we've seen already. How do you feel about it? Breaking down some of the mechanics because they've revealed four of the characters at the time of me filming this and both hits and misses. I, I like the characters that they've chosen. You've got your Storm, you've got Wolverine, you've got Psylocke, you've got Iceman, you've got a missions thing. And then there's a bunch of mystery as well. There's three weeks left to go and they're gonna show us every Friday what's between now and then. Three weeks, four weeks, whatever at the time of me filming this. But I have slowly developed a crush on Marvel Dice Throne. And my kids love it, and they love to play it. And if you give me X-Men, which is my preferred Avengers X-Men, you know you saw me with Marvel United. That's going to be happening as well. So that is by far and away number one. And they did the whole reaction video of content creators going, <gasps> 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 to their, you know, Gen Con reveal or whatever, right? So, you know, it's got some decent amount of hype behind it. But also in my video that I'll talk about my, you know, thoughts on Dice Throne as well, I've never seen such a toxic Facebook fan book, except for anything that wasn't named Board Game Revolution. Yeah, I said the he who shall not be named group right there, folks. Uh, but that's number one. Number two, number two, this is gonna surprise you, it's number two, not number three. Number two is actually gonna be Cascadero. Bitewing somehow got a new Dr. Rainer tile laying game, Cascadero. And now it's gonna be going with a roll and write version, slightly re-implemented, smaller, more portable, Cascadito. And Cascadero though, envoys going across lands 
and you're gonna be trying to combo them because you're gonna be trying to score in set collections type manners, but the more envoys in an area, the more points because one envoy in an area is not going to score you whatsoever because the locals are suspicious of newcomers. So you have to have multiple there in order to score in the first place. So do you go for small long chains or do you go for multiple big groups spread throughout? I have a copy coming to me as a preview copy so I can talk about it hands-on. And if you know anything about me, which you may or may not if you're tuning into this as a first-time viewer, I own Samurai, Babylonia, Tigris and Euphrates, Yellow and Yangtze, Blue Lagoon. I own pretty much everything. <laughs> the only one I don't own, well, that's kind of in that grouping. That's later on this list. Ha <laughs> ha! Spoilers! So that's what's so exciting about this. And again, it's just going to be a price point thing. Just going to be a price point thing. And Bitewing does pretty good on crowdfunding in terms of giving us the value. So I'm not as trepidatious as I might be otherwise for a new Rainer game in the first place. So that one makes me really excited as someone who owns all of the other ones I just mentioned, right? And I think you can own all of them. Tigris and Euphrates, Yellow and Yangtze folks are probably a little bit divided in the comment section, but I'll make the argument that Babylonia is the one you teach first. Boom! Hot take of the day. So what's number three? Witcher, Path of Destiny, go on board. The big problem with Old World is that it's just sprawling, right? It's got so much stuff. And now you condense that down into more of a bite-sized liege game of tableau building with card engine side of things okay okay now i'm not worried about the thematic incorporation i'm much less from that aspect i am much more team gameplay give me a rocking res arcana style gameplay and i'm using that very very loosely here in terms of the actual gameplay but there's videos out already the pre-launch page already has tons of content on it and tons of descriptions of taking your asymmetric various characters, leading them through missions, having different missions that you're going to be going up against at the variable endpoints and the bad guys, and just a little bit of everything there. But the issue is going to be, again, price point. Go on board has already said there's going to be exclusivity, so that's not going to be necessarily a question of why get it, but... Is it going to compare to something else like those card-driven tableau games that are out there that are already so well thought of and established? Like, I'm looking for something great there. Absolutely great. And so that's where the expectation is going to be. I want a rule book. I want to know what you're going to give me. I want less plastic, more gameplay. Less plastic, more gameplay. Motto of this channel right there in a nutshell. So that's why it's number three. We're gonna go 3B here is just a quick second because I'm anticipating this launching, but we don't actually have confirmation yet. I talked about it, or I will be talking about it in the news video, hopefully coming out this week as well, which again, you know, crunching videos together here. DC is getting the Simon treatment, i.e. the zombie side treatment. They announced earlier this month that we're gonna see zombie side get the DC aspect of things with Good guys being taken over, so does that mean we're the bad guys? Does that mean we're selected good guys? How is it going to compare to the Marvel X-Men combination one already? Which does that ultimately mean, more importantly, that we're going to get a DC United? Now that would cause me to drop some serious cash. You know me, I'm a United Marvel freak. I've owned it all, will own it all, but will sell also a good portion of it too, because I am not a completionist either. No qualms about saying that. So that one is going to be the great unknown. That's going to be the one that if this launches sometime this month, which I anticipate it will, crowded in with all the others towards the third and fourth weeks of the month, that's what you can expect to see on their Wednesday afternoon now, getting away from their usual previously def genre uh, hobby-defining Tuesday afternoon at 3 p.m. If you're old enough, like to me, to remember that they always did that, especially from the get-go. So that's going to be the other one that's sort of lurking out there. The next one up, you may have heard of, you may not have heard of as well. Lewis, I'm going to mispronounce his last name, Brua. The designer behind Keep the Heroes Out, one of my top games of last year. A cooperative, uh, sort of tower defense-esque, reverse, sort of skirmish cooperative game, where you're actually the bad guys, and the good guys are trying to raid your dungeon, and you're doing sort of the tower defense thing with some awesome wooden meeples, asymmetric factions, that not only change the dynamic and the power that is given to each faction and each enemy that you're actually playing as, 
but actually the number of creatures you control in the first place, right? Like if you're the dragon, you only have one. If you're Cthulhu, you only have one, but maybe you're the little rats. And so maybe you have five or six of those that go on the map and you spread throughout the actions. You go to your variable board setup with uh, like, I don't know, like 15 different scenarios in the base game alone, not to mention the difficulty of playing two or three rounds as you're sort of drawing these hero tokens to slowly see where they're gonna go, how they're gonna interact and how screwed you're gonna be in you know, a completely different pandemic style of things. And it's an absolutely fantastic game. But now we're getting an expansion called Boss Battles. More scenarios, more monsters, new ways of difficulty, and of course, well, boss battles. And that's probably the boss battling thing is the thing I'm most excited for because I have no clue how you're gonna do that. Because when you think of fighting off enemies, right? You think of fighting off like hordes. Well, these guys just kind of go into an area and have an action effect. Sometimes they stay around there, sometimes you clear them out, sometimes they don't stay around, sometimes they go to jail, sometimes they don't. And so there's not always like as persistent as you may imagine like in a game like this in the first place. And so giving me something more concrete as well as I'm playing with my socks during the middle of the video, um, that's what you've got going on here. And sometimes your socks just really bother you and the leg hair if you're like me. But that's... <laughs> what you get on this channel uh but i'm really interested to see because this again this was one of my top games of 2022 and if they can keep this up and just give me more of a good thing more of a good thing of a really good thing is well worth it now next up we're going to go number five here and again i have a hands-on copy of this one right now in front of me uh, in my house right now and this is Old King's Crown. Old King's Crown is going to be doing something a little bit different here. This is a card-driven conquest game. Think Oriflam, if you're familiar with that, with the card-driven aspect of the asymmetric nature of you playing them down and having different actions depending on what order they're in. Now only give that a map. And that's sort of the loose vibe that you get when you take a look at this. You're going to be playing these different locations on the board instead of in dynamic straight line that is Oriflam and there's going to be interaction that's going to happen based on how and which order and where they're revealed and it's just kind of a cool different spin on area control with an Oriflam twist you win you get more influence you win you get better rewards you get a number of influence well you hold it till the end of the round and you win so if the price point is right for a card driven aspect in this game you know, this is one of those that's going to fly into a lot of people's radar, but has been really well received from a lot of the comments from the sort of uh, convention scene on the media side of things. And I say media, and what I mean by that is social media, not me media. Because I have heard nar nary a thing hardly on my side of things, but I've seen a lot of people talking about it after conventions, especially the UK Expo, Gaming Expo from earlier in this year. So if you like that sort of thing, this one should heavily be of interest to you in the first place. Now, let's go. Let's go elsewhere. Let's go to the other Dr. Rayner. Because we're going over here and we're going with Through the Desert. Through the Desert was picked up by All Play. It's been out of print for a while. We're getting a new one at the end of the month. Now, similar with other All Play crowdfunding campaigns, they're coming with a trio. I don't really know what the other two are, but that's not what I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about Through the Desert. For $39, you're gonna be able to get a brand spanking new copy of this upgraded art and wonderfully illustrated game in the lines of the Knizia other examples of excellence. Tribes of nomads trying to control the desert. You got the artist and illustrator behind the boards of brass. Going for this one as well, that's a combination in heaven if you're asking me because this is one that I think deserves to be on a lot more shelves as well, myself included. $39 price point's pretty good. All play usually gives us a little bit bling to go along with it and that's gonna be maybe the make or break it because some of the all play stuff has been hit or miss in terms of gameplay for me, but also in terms of do I need some of those slight extras that they've offered with like the mini expansions or the tiny amount of deluxifications to go with it. So it's gonna be intriguing to see what they pair with this game as the other two. Color me intrigued to check out the campaign heavily, because you know I'm gonna do it anyway, but I have to say that too, uh, regardless, because of this one. And so that's going to be a great test of the reprints, right? We saw Ra, we saw Amun Re, we're seeing a lot of those and I like this stuff. Now, Tigers and Euphrates, unfortunately, that one got completely delayed. You're not gonna see that one anytime soon if you missed that news as well. So this one may have to sate your appetite or Cascadero until then. Now this next one up is going to be a great test as well. Two player asymmetry going head to head. We've seen a couple of these like The Hunt more recently. There's an upcoming one with Essen, uh, Dr. Hyde and Jekyll versus Scotland Yard or something along those lines, a very similar title. I can't remember if I'm 
getting it right or I'm probably getting it wrong. But this one is taking you into the aquatic. And this one is going to be kelp. And this is where you are either an octopus or a shark going head to head trying to win. The octopus laying your cards around the variable field, trying to hidden maneuver and out bluff the shark who is just going to use sheer brunt brute force as well as die rolling and special abilities to take each other out first. I mean, it sounds really kind of cool. The aesthetic is awesome. And this looks like the absolute perfect type of game for my wife and I to play because again, it's not learning five factions, right? You learn one really good and you kind of learn the other one and you play it again and again and again. I love that style of games. It's not going to be abstract, which is even my somewhat preferred on top of that. But give me this in spades and we'll see where it goes. I'll also be hopefully having a video out on this one at some point later in the month of October as well. And this is by Wonderbow Games, which the only other game of note that they've really put out more recently is the upcoming Sea Dragons, which has made a few people's top Essen list as well. So we're going to see kind of what they've got to offer with this one in Kelp. Now this is going to bring a little bit of the past back to the future as well with this one. And you may not recognize the name because they've twisted it and spun it around a little bit, but it's World Spanner Factions Set 1. This is going to be Heroes. Because we're going back to Duel of Ages. Remember that? Duel of Ages 2. Asymmetric Heroes. Crazy, chaotic, Amerithrash. Destroy everything. Cinematic style storytelling in terms of remembering what happened that game as you eked out a win with a crazy maneuver over your opponent. Yeah, that Duel of Ages 2. And we're getting a twist on it. Now coming back to crowdfunding. RPG meets adventure meets faction-based teams that are just going to give you a crazy combination of tactical RPG and adventure style game. You know what? Um, Heroes of the past, present, and future are just going to go crazy against each other. Two to eight players earning alliances of anywhere of one to six factions or the Queen Mother in this sort of Guards of Atlantis 2 style where you go in teams of, you know, however many divided into two against each other. And so I just love the idea of this as a co-op against even an AI system as well, which is Gardens of Atlantis is kind of missing in that sense. Can you replicate that in a crazy, chaotic, uh, MOBA-esque feel? In a, also more of a first-person shooter style? Yeah, I'm interested. 9 or 12 turns, move, attack, minion. That's it. I love the simplicity. Give me the dynamics with the actual abilities and the dynamic of how you're going to be doing all that stuff together rather than the minutia of... a huge overhead you know me <laughs> right this is checking boxes i told you this was a checking boxes month i wasn't kidding so again what's the price point going to be for something like this 49 heroes 90 treasures maps as well as new teams every single time expansions as well bringing the hero count up to 360 <laughs> craziness absolute craziness so Accessibility and price point. Make it or break it. Show me what you got. Now here at the end, we're going to go with two more here. The Night Cage is actually getting a Shrieking Hollow expansion as well, where you're just going to be holding back another unspeakable horror with your candlelight alone. Sh Shrieking Hollow is going to be just another expansion to the Night Cage, which is a very divisive cooperative game using your candle essentially to slowly light tiles as you uncover them while trying to fend off a horror and the shrieking hollow expansion is going to be essentially you can even crawl into the pit that the shrieking hollow is coming out of to delay it from further winning and some people really love this game some people not as much the board game geek rating is a 7-1 but i've heard very divisive opinions when you see it being discussed elsewhere so I don't know. More of a good thing? More of a good thing. Again, not have to mean for everyone by any means, but how different is it? Do you like the horror theme? I mean, me personally, I don't really do horror. I don't do horror in the video or movie side of things as well. Like, not my preferred genre. Okay with it. Dabbled every once in a while, but your mileage is going to vary. The last up this week, we're going to actually talk about, uh, again, a complete remake of something that was completely out of nowhere. And this is actually going to be a remake, re-inspired by version of the 1979 game Magic Realm, which is sort of your open world D&D uh, &D RPG adventure style 
game where they're basically trying to streamline it, bring it back to authenticity as well as notoriety. And we're going to kind of see, they give a little bit of a description in the sandbox based adventure game on the board game geek description, as well as kind of breaking down what's going to be different, how it's going to be more streamlined, how they're taking some of the nuances or some of the minutia or some of the tediousness out of the original that has not necessarily stood the test of time for a game that's been highly sought after, but also out of print for quite some time that again, how does it stand up compared nowadays to some of the more modern dungeon crawl sandbox games in the first place? Again, I have no idea, but this is going to be an interesting test of the market because it's going to be through Mr. B Games, which I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. What can you do? What are we going to see nostalgia wise? We've seen several surprises already from the nostalgia side of things from restoration games. So is this going to be sort of a similar vibe, similar ilk style of things? I could see funding being anywhere all over the place with this one, but that's why we're talking about it in the first place. Now we'll go to two honorable mentions that are just worthy of note because one of them is by a significant publisher that you'll recognize. And the other one is an IP that again is more nostalgia based, which could surprise or maybe not depending on how you feel about that. First one up here, Garfield is putting out another one in a completely new line of products. And this is Nehemiah and Ezra based on basically building up the temple and the walls around Jerusalem uh, back in biblical days. And how different of a worker placement style spin is, is that going to be? And that's really the question. You know Garfield, it's going to be slightly more expensive. You're going to get a slight promo pack to go along with it if they stay tried and true to their previous methods. You've got your diehards with them. You've got your diehards with Stonemeyer. You've got your diehards with Chip Theory. And people tend to like those similar designs of similar companies, and that's okay. We all have a type. I'm a level 99 sort of semi simon ish person as well, so that's completely okay. But that's going to be the question I raise in this one as someone who has always had a few of the Garfield titles on their periphery, on their radar, and even dabbled in one or two here and there. I'm always intrigued by what they're putting out. It's probably not always going to be for me, but I'm always going to give it a heavier look-see than something just, you know, random as well. So don't mind the theme whatsoever. I like to see how they can incorporate it and what it's going to look like um, over, I think, sort of three periods of weeks where you're going to be taking six days and then resting on the Sabbath. And so you're going to be like taking actions over six rounds doing a sort of recovery action on the seventh, doing that a series of three times before the end of the game and the most victory points wins. The other one, nostalgia-based one here is Smurfs, right? Smurfs, a miniature cooperative-based game where you're going up against Gargamel and his evil cat, Azrael. <laughs> My kids are a fan of the IP. They love the live action with Neil Patrick Harris. They're even getting into the cartoon occasionally. We stay away from that though. We're more of a bluey family right now, actually with the three-year-old amazing cartoon i highly recommend it so uh that's going to be the question is it nostalgia is it really going to hit home i mean we've seen a couple of these 80s ips do okay with like he-man but i don't really know if there's an appeal for this nowadays i can't see that there's a huge appeal especially from a miniature side of things though then diagram of the two overlapping there doesn't seem to be as big but who knows i mean we're seeing worms we're seeing fireball island i just talked about magic realms so I have no idea at this point. And it's going to be kind of, again, an interesting test of the market because like I said earlier, less plastic, more gameplay. We'll leave it at that. We didn't even get to two at the end here that were, you know, essentially even just squeezed out of the honorable mentions. Molly House, the latest from Whirly Gig Games, is set in 1720s London. No clue what that one's about. And then you have Obsession as well, getting a new expansion from the heavier Euro style of things. So... That's going to be really intriguing to see where those ones go to. I have no idea. How do you feel about that stuff? That's October in a nutshell right there. A lot of stuff going on and a lot more stuff that just seems overall more accessible from top to bottom. And that should interest you. And that should make you happy because you know what? If you're like me, the 30 to $50 price point lately is hitting the table a whole heck of a lot easier than the $100 price point. And you know, it's better for your wallet sake too. That's why I do the crowdfunding roundups on a weekly basis to help you be the most informed, just like these ones. Again, budgeting and decision making. Consumer driven. So there you go. That's all I got. Subscribe if you made it this far. Please? Question mark? It'd be awesome? Question mark? Ron Burgundy? That's all I got. It'd be nice. <laughs> I got nothing. I got nothing ramble otherwise at the end here and...
usually I'm full of something witty and quick, and I don't know. Let's go with what the shirt says. You can certainly try. Stay classy. See you around. Have a great freaking day.